Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 10 American Destroyer gearing. We're on the map Mountain Range. The build is on the screen. It is a very typical build, with the exception of the Legendary Module. And also, I have, you know, my basic commander skills. They haven't been changed with the introduction or the prevalence of the aircraft carriers as we've worked through the patches from the initial CV rework. So, you know, maybe I'm going out on a limb a little bit with radio location rather than having manual AA there. But regardless, we're going to be given an interesting scenario. One that many players are forced to deal with. A buttload of enemy aircraft carriers and only, you know, a token amount of DDs. You're expected to somehow gain territory on the map. And it's not fun because it's very slow and methodical uh, for the DDs. They're used to being able to rush into a capture and cause some contested scenario to occur, either through smoke or torpedoes. That's what they are expecting, but you can't do that anymore. Now, I'm creeping forward with my friendly Des Moines, and I wanted to have him at least close enough that if the enemy aircraft carrier wanted to commit, he would have to go towards myself and the DM. And both of our tools together, nothing gets through. Nothing gets through. Now, I was concerned that the friendly was being spotted, so I decided to pop smoke. The, you know, maybe the plan was that I would pop smoke, and since it's an American smoke, it would be billowing continuously all the way up to the capture point. Unfortunately, that's not what actually worked out. But there's plenty of room from the friendly Des Moines to at least provide an AA bubble over the corner of the objective that I'm trying to capture. And this was communicated with my teammate, and we both agree this is a great strategy for what's developing. There, there seems to be nobody in the center, and anyone who had have any way of revealing the Des Moines, or maybe myself with radar forcibly, they're not really in position to do that. Now, this is going to just scream to the enemy to send aircraft. Now, I can't go too far away from my Des Moines. I must stay disciplined. I also must keep my AA turned off. You are at a disadvantage if the enemy sees you coming. If you are one of those that refuses to reveal your location, and it does look like the Indomitable is on approach, it makes it much harder for him to feel comfortable about what he's going into. And this is exactly what I'm playing on with the Indomitable. Of course, he's trying to interrupt me, but he crosses the second barrier and we can't afford to keep our AA off. But once we turn it on, it is gone in a blink of an eye. And that is really how I expect the, the uh, game to evolve. You're gonna have these kill teams with AA. Uh, it's really, really powerful to have these kill teams. Any DD that has any level of AA, you know, uh, Grozovoy gearings, hell, even the Z-52 has really impressive AA, if I'm not honest with you. The Kaba as well. If you if you tie it in with a cruiser that has, you know, one-to-one -one AA concealment and some sort of defensive or otherwise, you basically blow up the squadron instantly. And you can use that as a way to stall out the enemy aircraft carrier. I mean, he has to deal with the problem. He can't deal with it until the other problem has been dealt with, right? It's sort of a layered problem. You've got a cruiser who has great AA, and you can't really deal with it all that well. But you can't get close to the cruiser to deal with it because he has a friendly DD as an escort. You kind of need a battleship or a long-range cruiser to assist you in engaging the Des Moines. Now, the enemy was, you know, headed towards us, sort of sandwiched, pincered. I told my teammate, hey, let's go after this guy. He uses radar. Easily dealt with enemy Yue Yang. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do possible. And that's how I like my strategy. And that's actually the first blood of the game. But that should mean that we can capture C point right after we transition from B. And we had a friendly Des Moines in the center for most of that. But because of the enemy's deployment and also... One key fact, and oh yeah, my audio is all screwed up. One key fact about this. Don't do this strategy if there's more than two DDs on this map or otherwise, because the DDs are really what is keeping ships like the Des Moines spotted. 
the aircraft carrier can't. You know, those cruisers have one-to-one. So if he was going to keep you spotted, you could punish him with the assistance of another DD. And that really just plays out very well. I really enjoy all of these aspects. Now, I was headed over to Seapoint trying to get, I don't know, a token XP credit for participating. It didn't work out. Unfortunately, though, the Hipper's trying to fire on us as he's rounding the island, and the enemy aircraft carrier is on approach to my teammate. So, obviously, I turn on my defensive AA, he turns his on, and we're trying to get kills. We want every single squadron killed off, and that's exactly what we did, but he did get one drop in the water. So that is a concern. But another concern is that B point is being captured and I don't see the target. So one of the, the one DD, literally, the only one left on the enemy team, he's in the capture point. My teammate, unfortunately, had to retreat from the area. So I'm going to sort of be the screener. DDs, this is your bread and butter. Destroyers love to be out and about, see things before anyone else can, and try and help them. Friendly Cleveland, I believe, chose to use his radar, which conveniently spot the Gearing, who happens to be very unhealthy. And I could, you know, openly fire. That is a possibility. And you know what? I am going to do it. And my, my plan was any chip damage is going to cause him to be a little bit more passive. Plus, I was going to place the smoke here regardless. This covers a, a pretty significant gap for my team so that they can, you know, deal with the problem in a safe way. This hipper's trying to round this, and I notice how low health he is. I've got to contribute and kill this guy. We do contribute. Another teammate also contributes. And so far, we're the only person with the kills on either side, and uh, we've only done 5,800 damage. But my teammate, who pulled a really hard noncer, he does have smoke now. He should be able to hopefully be concealed. Torpedoes are still reloading. The first set wasn't successful. Doing a quick check on my priority sector. There is a lot of aircraft carriers, but this island is really good at concealing my location so that I can have my AA on pretty much once the enemy is committed. You know, it starts at exactly 5.6 kilometers or whatever the range is on my AA. And we're able to hopefully, yeah, the squadron that was trying to recall, completely wiped out before it was recalled. The main torpedo squadron was flying over multiple friendlies, and of course, they're able to shoot down a ton too. So it's a win-win for everyone on my team. And here are the torpedoes trying to slow down, and uh, like a glove, just barely missed me. And we're able to move forward. Now, there's no enemy DDs left. They're all dead. The enemies have A and B, and they're sort of establishing a very defensive front between A and B. This is a very typical strategy that I see, and one that is not impossible to counter. My torpedoes are reloaded, and I note that the enemy Des Moines is sort of backing up because my teammates are rounding the island that he's actively using as defense. So I'm hoping that my torpedoes will close up the one area that he is using to defend himself. Obviously, while all that's going on, I wanted to try and spot as many enemies as I can. We run into a Salem, and the Salem has shallow radar, but still has radar. So I have to be careful of that. I don't want to be too far towards him. And on top of that, there's an enemy aircraft carrier, two enemy aircraft carriers that are just flying around, harassing everyone. This is the one aspect of the DD that really just is just forced to slow down. You can't do anything without smoke or overwhelming AA firepower. And you have neither in this particular situation. And I'm just confirming the location that my AA is set up to. My smoke is basically up. My plan was go in, contest, force the enemy to pay attention to me. While that's occurring, my teammates who are behind me can fire over me and we can deal with them in multiple ways. The enemies did defeat the Des Moines, who was backing up, so the torpedoes that I sent for him ended up being meaningless, but we were going to contribute regardless. This JB, he's fast approaching, and I'm concerned that he has my friendly spotted, and he absolutely does. 
So I've got to do something. I've got to try and draw attention to me. And one of the best ways to do it, pop smoke and fire your guns. Maybe a Des Moines, maybe the Salem might turn back towards me. The JB absolutely has an idea that I exist. And in response to that, looks like he's softening his angle. Oh, we could get an enemy Mogami in the background. Of course, I'm going to fire on this guy. Get a kill. Absolutely worth any and all effort. As long as I'm still alive after this. Friendlies are able to take him out. The JB, Jean Bar, he looks like he's so dead. Yeah, these torps all over him. Perfect positioning. And uh, perfect little lead prediction. Obviously, he's a French battleship. He's going to gain speed out of a turn. Just makes sense. Now, I'm capturing the base, just the corner. There is a Des Moines. I don't want to be too close to the Des Moines, for obvious reasons. I don't want to be too close to the Salem, for obvious reasons. I just want to sit in my smoke safely and keep my AA on. Um, so some players are kind of confused, are not familiar with what Wargaming has done. You do not want to keep your AA turned off in smoke. It has the appearance of randomness from the point of view of the enemy aircraft carrier. Where it's not random is your main battery. That's why I'm holding my fire. And oh, of course he uses radar. He just barely moved into range and the enemy aircraft carrier. I'm just desperately trying to stall it out. But of course, I, I played it incorrectly. I moved out of the capture and now it's a complete waste of my time to be here. I'm just going to sail directly away from the Des Moines expecting that he's the one responsible for keeping me radar spotted. And we'll know in, you know, half a second whether he is. And yes, sure enough, he is. We cross that 10 kilometer threshold and it instantly turns off. He did incapacitate my torpedo system. And of course, we've got to wait a full two minutes on that one. And it was ready to go at the exact rate as my first torpedo friendly is able to point blank torp. The Salem. I don't know why the Salem allowed himself to get in that situation. But regardless, this has fast approached a dominating position that we've had. And you know what? It didn't go that bad. Yes, I had to slow my roll immensely. But those AA cruisers are outstanding teammates to have like a pairing. And we can do a lot of work just as effectively as before, but we have to have a strategy to deal with the aircraft carrier. We can't do it alone, and that's the frustrating part for a lot of players. But you know what? There is something magical about experiencing teamwork with a division mate or just someone you hit, hook up with in a game, and you're able to take multiple objectives, keep, both, uh, keep everyone alive who's invested in the strategy, and clearly dominate. It was really a, a great, rewarding experience for me, and one that I wasn't completely expecting, if I'm being completely honest. Now, I did have to use pretty much every single smoke charge and defensive AA. We were successful, and uh, that's the best part about this strategy, is that it worked out. Now, one thing that I'm still considering as we finish up this game, should I switch out of radio location for manual AA? And the reason I am even contemplating that is it is a very big benefit to DDs. They have a very high percentage from their priority sector, making that an even bigger number. It would stand to reason that you would have very impressive continuous DPS. And having very impressive continuous DPS is how you deal with aircraft. And this enemy midway, he refused to allow my teammates to kill him. I'm going to be the one who's responsible, and I sent my torpedoes expecting that he would just, you know, sail backwards and flat. He clearly didn't, and conveniently, there's a perfect gap the size of a carrier that he's able to use to avoid. But yeah, I'm, I'm still deciding, contemplating. I really, really love radio location. But you know what? Radio location isn't as useful when there's aircraft carriers on your team, because they can just go and spot stuff and they use a combination of their aircraft, situation awareness, and just general last known position. They can, they can pretty much find anyone. So I'm really on the fence whether I should drop radio for manual. That's, that's where I'm at right now. There's just so few DDs, and honestly, 
the enemy aircraft carriers are so persistent against us that we've got to be overwhelmingly powerful. Otherwise, they're going to take any and all little bit of chip damage and turn that into a final kill on your DD. They, they're ruthless. They don't care. They just want to be the one killing everything. So that's, that's the one aspect of this that I'm still in the fence. But can you just appreciate how wonderful the Gearing Legendary is? That extra concealment gives you that little bit more ambush room and it makes you even more stealth. So the enemy aircraft carrier has to get even closer. 2.6, 2.7 is way better than 3. And you know, oh, it's a very small number, but it's a significant number because it's it's the area that the aircraft carrier has to cover that he wouldn't normally have to against other DDs. And that could mean the difference between him just trying some other place because he figures that he would have already spotted it, or he is overcommitting into a defensive AA, possibly manual AA gearing with basic firing training. Yeah, he's going to hate his life if uh, I ever get that opportunity. But team did a great job, and I really enjoyed this game. You know, it was just, it was different. It was familiar enough that I was going for the objectives, but it obviously had the carrier work that needed to be done, and it absolutely was done, and thank you everyone who helped out. We got three kills, two base captures, not top on the team, that is for the annoying Italian, but you know, overall everyone contributed, and we did a great job. The Indomitable did succeed against some of my teammates. He didn't attack me. If he would have, he would have had less success. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you next time.